Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. In Anime Studio 10, we now have three new tools that we can use in our project files. Additionally, we also have some updates to the tools in the toolbar. So, what are they? Well, let's find out. The Blob Brush tool is new to version 10 of Anime Studio. And this tool is pretty cool. First, you have a radius, and you can adjust it at the top numerically, or hold an Alt and go from left to right to adjust the size. Once you have a size that you like, you can come in here and start drawing. Now, the thing is, as you draw, What's going to happen here is once you release, it's going to create a shape with an outline. Now what's cool here is if you decide to keep going, so let's say we fill in this area, we can continue just to paint over everything. You can see right there, it creates another outline. And basically it just molds to what you're doing. So now we've filled in that object and now we just have an outline on the outside. So we can come in here, make an extension, add an ear. We can come down here and color in a neck just to um, show you what we can do here. So it's pretty unique. And we can also hold in control or command, if you are on a Mac, to use this as an eraser tool. So we can come in here and punch out some objects here or shapes to create then a hole in the object. And this is, again, useful when you're creating more complex shapes. And we could keep going here, and we could draw some teeth. And basically, you know, whatever you want. Um, it can really uh, be molded to however you want to work. And we could also, as you can see here, use the delete portion to trim things up. And again, the outline will just automatically pop back in once you are finished painting over the object. So that, again, is pretty unique. Now, additionally, if you have a tablet, you can use pen pressure for this. So the more pressure you apply, you know, you'll have different results happening on your screen. But just note that it does create a lot of points, like the freehand tool. But there is another tool that has been introduced that will help with this. The point reduction tool is the next tool in the list. And basically, this will allow us to reduce the points of an object, as we kind of specified before. You can adjust your radius like you could with any other tool, and the tolerance angle will dictate how many points are removed as you use this tool. The lower the number, the less points will be removed. The higher the number, the more points you'll remove. You can see there, as we drew on those points, quite a bit were removed. However, the shape was altered slightly, and you will have that happen if you remove a lot of points. So we can nudge this back a bit and then try it again. You can see now that a lot of points were removed, and for the most part, we preserved the shape of the object. And we can come in here and just go through all the outlines and try to reduce these points as best as we can. Again, you'll have to keep adjusting the tolerance angle to get the desired results because different shapes will call for different tolerance angles. So this can be really useful if you use the blob brush or freehand tools. The eraser tool is also new to version 10 and it allows us to punch holes in objects and delete portions of objects. First, you will need to select a shape in order to use the eraser tool. And you can adjust the radius like you could with any other tool by holding an alt and going from left to right or adjusting the numbers at the top. Now, we can click and drag and you can see we now have two shapes with that rectangle. We could increase the size and come in here and cut out another portion of that shape, again altering the look of it completely. Now you'll see when we come over here to the circle, we can't alter it. Well, that's because we haven't selected it yet. 
you have to make sure it's selected before you can alter it. Now you can come in here and you can carve out your shape how you want. You'll notice that this does create a lot of points and you might want to use the point reduction tool after using this tool. But as you can see, you can make your new shapes as complex as you like. We can come in here and zigzag and just really cut out a unique shape that can be used for many different purposes. The paint bucket has seen an enhancement in version 10. But first, let's take a look at its basic functions. We'll draw out a rectangle with the Add Shape tool with no fill or stroke. Then taking the paint bucket, we can select Fill at the top and click just to apply a fill. If we do Stroke, that will apply Stroke Properties, and if we do both, that will of course apply both from the Style Palette. So there's that, and that's how it's always worked. Now, in previous versions, you had to have a shape that was welded shut in this example right here. We weld the shape shut completely and then we take the paint bucket and fill it in. That's how it used to work and you can still do that but now if for instance we take the freehand tool and just draw some lines you'll notice if we take the transform point tool and click and move around that these lines are not welded to the horizontal lines. Yet, if we take the paint bucket and click inside this enclosed area, it will create a shape, again, without any welding, which is a great feature in version 10. And you can even keep that outline. You can see here we move that fill shape, but we keep the outline that we previously made. So you can easily make duplicates. Now, this will allow you to create more complex shapes. So for instance, let's take the oval tool draw out a circle, and then draw a second circle inside of it. Now with the paint bucket, we can click inside that bigger circle and we created a moon. As you can see, we render it out, it looks good. Now with that moon selected, we could go up here to the edit menu and choose select inverse, and then hit the delete key to remove that second outline. And now you have the shape as standalone. And you can even go a little bit crazier with this if you wanted to. Let's, let's again take the draw shape tool and draw out an oval, maybe a second one. We can then take the rectangle tool and just start drawing some rectangles here. You know, just different shapes and sizes, just coming in here and intersecting with that oval. Now taking the paint bucket, click inside, you now have a really complex shape and then we can select inverse again. And as you can see, we can really do some great things here that would normally take us a lot of time, you know, if we had the add point tool and we had to draw in all these points. So the paint bucket has definitely been enhanced. Some of you longtime Anime Studio users may recall that the layer tools saw a combination or a consolidation in version nine. Basically, you could move, scale, and rotate all with one tool. Well, the same now has happened with your point tools. You'll notice on your toolbar, you no longer have a scale points tool or a rotate points tool. You have what looks like the translate points tool, but when you put your cursor over it, you can see it's now called the transform points tool. And that's because it now holds three different jobs. It can move points, it can resize points, and it can rotate points. So in order to use this new tool, it's pretty simple. First, you can just click on the tool. And in this case, I will alter an eyebrow. And I can just click on that shape to select it. Now, what you'll notice here is we now have two boxes that go around the shape. This is what we'll be working with when it comes to using the different features of the tool. So first, if your cursor is in the middle, you'll notice now that there is a crosshair-like icon on the cursor. This means we can translate or move the shape around. So if we hold down our mouse button, we can just move around wherever we want. So that's how you would move things with this new points tool. Second, if you're looking to rotate, what you can do is place your cursor here then 
between the two boxes, you'll notice now the cursor changes to a rotation type icon. If you click and hold down, you can then rotate your objects or your points. Now you'll notice that as we do this, the box itself is not rotating. When we rotate and release, you can see the box is still maintaining basically the same positioning. And that's because the rotation isn't remembered like layer rotations. Only the points rotate and nothing else, basically. So that is what's going on there, in case you are curious. And finally, you can resize your shapes or your points by using the handles within that inner box. You can see we have some dots here. Now, depending on where you place your cursor is how you will resize. So for instance, if you go into the corner, you can see we can resize the entire object at once. If you go on one of the horizontal points, you can go in and out like this, and you can do a vertical resize as well. Now, some things still remain. For instance, if you hold in shift and then move your object or points to the left or right, you'll notice that I can't go up or down. So you can still constrain how your points move. The same goes for up and down when you are holding in shift. So that still works. Also, holding in shift when rotating will only rotate at 45 degrees. Again, that's similar or the same as to how previous versions of Anime Studio worked. Also, when you are resizing horizontally like this, if you hold down the Alt key while doing this, you can then create a squash effect if you want. So that can be useful for certain situations when you are resizing your objects. And like before, you just click a shape to select it. You can see I have two shapes here on this layer. And I can just click to select them and then the box goes around and then you can work within those points. And finally, if you want to select certain types of points, you can also use the Select Shape tool while using this tool. Now the Select Shape tool is still its own tool, but if you are on a Mac and hold down Command, or if you're on a PC and you hold down Control, and you start to move your mouse around, you can see I can draw out a box here, and I can select the points I want to then work with. So that can be very useful as a quick reference then to your select points tool without having to actually go and click on that tool. You can just use a shortcut key for that when you are on the transform points tool. In previous versions of Anime Studio, you had three separate tools that allowed you to work with your bones. There was a translate bones tool, which allowed you to move the bones, the scale bones tool, which allowed you to resize, and then the Rotate Bones tool, which allowed you to rotate. Well, with Anime Studio 10, everything has now been condensed into one bone, and it's referred to as the Transform Bone tool. You can see it right here. Now, you might be confused at first if you are a longtime user because it looks like the Rotate Bone tool, but it actually holds three different functions now. So, let's just find a bone here. And you can see when I place my cursor even near a bone, we have some handles up here. This is indicating that we are near that bone and we could work with that bone if we wanted to. Let's zoom in here on this bone right down here. And what we can do now is you can see that when my cursor is on the outside of the bone or even in the inside of the bone in the middle, basically anywhere where the bone is in the general area, if you click and hold down your mouse button, you're going to rotate the bone through the connected position. So basically you have your thick point right here. It will rotate from that point. So when you need to rotate, that's what you'll do. If you want to resize, you will find the skinny point of your bone or the last point to be drawn out right down here. And you can see my cursor now changes to a scale icon. If you click and hold and move up and down, you can see that I can scale the bone. Now finally, if you are looking to translate or move the bone, you'll want to go up to the other point. That's the top point here and where the bone is thickest. And if you click and hold, 
you can then move the bone around. And that's all there really is to it. Now, if you have issues with trying to grab the bone that you want, remember there is always the hide bone option. So you can select the bones that you want to hide. Let's say in this case, this one was kind of having issue because they were overlapping, just for argument's sake. Then you could focus solely on this bone if you wanted to. So I think as you work with this, you will find that the streamlined process really makes working in Anime Studio a lot easier and a lot quicker. If you'd like more information on Anime Studio, you can visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.